Hi, you guys. So this is more for the newer people than for the people who have been here for a minute, but it's really for everyone. Um, I understand that there is skepticism with regard to the research regarding the end times, meaning that there are a whole bunch of people who are fatigued from people trying to figure things out. And they've just resolved themselves to, no man knows the day or the hour. <laughs> I hate that because first of all, it takes scripture out of context. People have contorted it to mean something entirely different from the scriptural intent. And uh, because they don't believe it's knowable, then they've projected that thought onto the Bible and says what well, the Bible says that we can't know. And that's just not the truth. So I have a, a few problems with that thought out there. But I do understand the fatigue that all of this continual feast date chasing and signs in the heavens chasing. And I saw a comment about Harold Camping earlier uh, about people who have been trying to find this information, seeking this information for decades. And people have just gotten exhausted from people thinking they knew and turned out to be wrong. And um, I get it. I get it. That's all I can say is I get it. But at the same time, the people who come onto my channel and say, well, what if you're wrong? So I have safeguarded my research to the best of my ability. And when I say to the best of my ability, it means because I wasn't there to see these specific events in these specific years, I have to defer to historical records. But insofar as it is possible for me to safeguard my research from the what ifs or from choosing the wrong object to focus on, like a sign in the heavens or a feast day or something like that, when you follow it through the Bible and you use the correct data points and ascertain the correct dates and times and years and counts, you are only ever going to arrive at a singular conclusion, not a myriad conclusion. And that's what I say I've built safeguards into my research. Now, the only reason I can't confirm 100% that my research is correct is because, again, I wasn't there in these ancient BC years to say, yes, it was undeniably 1406 BC when they entered the Promised Land. Do I believe it was? Yes. Is, is there research surrounding that supports that? Yes. Do people think it could have been a year or two off one way or the other? Yes. Do people say it could have been 100 years later? Yes, there's that too. And so that's why I have a dozen data points that have to connect. I, I got a comment as, as um, recent as this morning that said, what if? And I got another one last week that said, well, what's the furthest you could move it up? A decade, 100 years? No, guys, no. My channel doesn't work like that. My research doesn't operate like that. I gave a range of three potentials because when I wrote this back in 2024, I wrote about this back in 2024, sorry, in 2020 rather, um, of course, people were looking at something that was closer because that's the human want. That's the humanness of this is people want something to happen sooner rather than later. I understand that. But simply because somebody wants something to happen doesn't mean that God's going to move his timeline accordingly and due diligence using the Bible as the only source and taking our wants and needs out of it and just looking at what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? I don't care what people want. I didn't go into this with the idea of finding something that I wanted to be true. I just said, when's it going to happen? Tell me, can I know? And if I can, what is the answer? That's all I cared about was what is the answer? And so I used a dozen data points to find the, the year. Again, short of having been there myself, that is what I did. And then I said, okay, if this, then here's your answer. And that's as simple as that goes. So could 1406 be wrong? Sure. Does it have uh, an indefinite amount of wiggle room? No, because again, it's one of 12 different data points that I used. And obviously if one of those shifts, then everyone has to shift and you can't shift all of those indefinitely. So I did people what a solid, gave them what they wanted and gave them a range of three years. Uh, so 2023, 2024, and 2025. But my thought was always with 2025 because that's where the majority of the valid research, <laughs> meaning the, um, the best sourcing came from. So I was always of the opinion 2025, but I had a range of three years. Well, now we're now approaching 2025 and we can see how that's probably always been the legitimate answer because it was always going to be the closer to time we saw things geopolitically moving into a spot where they needed to be to 
precipitate to allow Gog and Magog to occur. These are not moving targets. That's number one of the end times research study philosophy. These are not moving targets. There are fixed appointed times. And when I say appointed times, I do not mean feast dates. Please dissociate those two things from my lingo. When I say appointed times, I mean God wrote into his word on this date, in this month, at this year, this is when this is going to happen. And so our job is to find that, to understand what it means, and to make the wise sense of what he left behind for us to find. Now, if you're able to do that, which I do believe I have done, then it's all fairly simple from there on out. It all hinges on when Israel came into the promised land. Nisan 10 of if 1406, then the 70th Jubilee after that, and there's a whole line of research about why 70, but contextually, it's Daniel was in the 70th week, or he was in the 70 years of Babylonian captivity, understanding the end point of that, when he received the vision of the 70 weeks, which includes 70 AD, <laughs> but the 70th week of which will occur on the 70th Jubilee. So if 1406, then 2025, and the Sabbath years, which the Jubilees are built upon, all have a Nissan 10 start day, which is why the event, which is tied to seal one, the opening of seal one is pinpointed to in Ezekiel 40, the beginning of the year, the 10th day of the month, Nissan 10 in a Jubilee year, which would be the 70th. So I understand that there is a cynicism about this. I understand that there's a hesitation to accept this. Well, that's because you're not me and you didn't do the research. If you were me and you did do the research, you would know that it's pretty foolproof. But at this point, I'm just sharing what I, I showed you. Uh, but you don't have my methodology. You don't know how I was led to these things. You don't know the hows and whys, the what's, the where's, the you know whatever. You just have the end result and you are thinking that I'm just supposed to expect you to accept that. You don't have to. Do your own research. I have over and abundantly given you all of the research that I used so that you could follow the same path that I did 100% of the time for whoever chooses to do the research. The difference is you might not agree with it or you might have different uh, interpretations of things. That's fine. But then you have to understand that I'm not the one seeking the information from other people. I'm not the one out there saying, well, does this person agree with me? I don't care if they do or not. I know what my research was. I know it's right. And I know where it leads and I know how and why I got it. I'm not the one seeing uh, out there saying, what if this? What if that? What if you're wrong? I don't have that cynicism. I don't have those jaded thoughts. So you have to kind of flip script a little bit and say, well, I'm not out there seeking validation or verification from other people. I did the research. I know what I know and why I know it. Uh, and so other people coming to my channel and being like, well, what if? I don't have what if scenarios because I know what I found and I know what it means. And if this, then this, that's the long and short of it. So I'm not asking people to accept it on blind faith and hope. I've given you every single scripture reference and I've, I've charted it out so that you can see my work. You don't have to say, well, well, I, I'm not showing you how I got there. I, I show everyone how I got there. The verses that I link, the data points that I use, the correlation and everything. I show my work. You don't have to accept it. That's fine. But I don't tolerate people coming here and saying, what if? What's your backup plan? How off could you be? That's your projection of uncertainty onto me. I am not uncertain.